Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about the Modal Sculpt. Many of you might know Modal as a manufacturer of top-notch electronic musical instruments like the OO series, so it may come as a surprise that one of their products is the protagonist of a Bad Gear episode. This super compact 2018-ish 4 voice virtual analog synthesizer not only comes with an elegant British S, it was also subject to a Kickstarter campaign. While not as spectacular as Lionel Richie's head or potato salad, this campaign exceeded its goals and provided the necessary funds and publicity for the sculpt. Regardless of your views on Kickstarter projects good and bad, the little synthesizer promises a lot, at least on paper. Let's take a closer look. At the first glance, the sculpt is tick in many oddly shaped boxes. The tiny enclosure houses a polyphonic 32 oscillator subtractive synth engine, a massive modulation matrix, three envelopes, two LFOs, one of them polyphonic, a filter capable of morphing between low, band and high pass, a polyphonic sequencer with modulation lanes, an arpeggiator, a chord functionality, delay, delay distortion, FM, ring modulation, a battery compartment and a banana dispenser. All this is supposed to be controlled with a UI experts have described as Actually it's quite straightforward to get to use and it's not intuitive in any way. I have to admit that I found it very off-putting at first, but got used to it rather quickly. The front panel looks like a Pac-Man level designed by a spider on caffeine. You have to shift whatever dial button the hell out of the controls and please leave a comment if you actually like these touch keyboards. I was suffering from cognitive dissonance when I discovered that both mini jacks for audio and full-sized 5-pin MIDI sockets grace the rear panel of the unit. Modal put a lot of cutting-edge synth goodness into the sculpt. The oscillator section is extremely versatile, offering two oscillators which can be morphed smoothly between standard waveforms and different shades of noise. Detuned Stacked to chords Combined to a monster mono and or roughened up with ring and frequency modulation. It allows for a large variety of tones even without employing the well-balanced filter. Kudos to all of you who can manage complex modular-like modulation settings using only the front panel controls. We mere mortals will probably stick to the editor's software. The arpeggiator has everything and the kitchen sink and the sequencer can hold patterns up to 8 bars. Nice. This feature o get on is, of course, ideal for all kinds of pads Dirty leads that retain a modicum of pop appeal and noisy FX sounds all knobs are endless rotary encoders and although they feel quite wobbly and plasticky, they are super responsive and you will get visual feedback via the keyboard's LEDs. The touch keyboard shows some very odd behavior. What is more, the synth is crashing a lot and the noise generator seems to be working overtime when the unit is turned off. People who backed the Kickstarter campaign had the opportunity to get 30 units for around 5000 quid and it's easy to find a sculpt on the used market. The Modal Sculpt is a powerful synthesizer trapped in a feeble plastic enclosure. Will the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? You have already heard the sculpt in our little intro tune. 
It took me a little longer than usual to dial in sounds that work in this context. Let's explore some of the sonic possibilities in the first jam. The sequencer is easy to operate and I like the noisy and dreamy qualities of the synth engine. There is a little bit of sweet spot hunting, but the smoothness of the parameter morphs, especially when working the oscillator section, is a pleasant surprise. For the second jam I tried to use the Sculpt sequenced by the Beatstep Pro, but the synth repeatedly crashed in this configuration. However, I wanna know if it can stand its ground as a mono bass in this DAW controlled rail shooter. Sculpt wouldn't be my first choice for this application. Still, the filter, distortion and FM functionality are a great toolkit for more in-your-face sounds too. There are a lot of Sculpt demos on the internet and many of them show the instrument as a source of more experimental and left-field sounds. It would be interesting to find out if the synth is ready for the mainstream in this rooftop bar day drinking ultra music major deal now. I almost forgot about the hashtag participation genre descriptions of last week. Thank you for your hashtag participation. You rule progressive house anthem. I'm pretty sure that I have used a more plasticky, toyish and flimsy electronic musical instrument. I just can't remember when. This being said, the synth engine is a sound designer's dream, with a great oscillator section, seamless parameter tweaking and countless modulation possibilities. Nothing of this is gimmicky and the proudly digital sounds punch above the synthesizer's weight, literally and figuratively. The people over at Modal are masters of their craft. They know how to build a powerful synthesizer and certainly are on top of the marketing game. First they grabbed my attention with the whole Kickstarter thing, then they got me hooked with their gateway plastic synth contraption and now I have to find a way to buy an 008 without having to sell one of my vital organs. Respect! Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 